Hi guys, Mr. Hill here with your maths for today. So we're going to be looking at how to convert an improper fraction to a mixed number. Now, don't worry if there's some vocabulary there you don't understand. We're going to go over it as we go through this lesson. And by the end of it, you'll know exactly what an improper fraction is and exactly what a mixed number is. So before we get started, something to have a look at. Read the questions carefully on this one. There's, the answers are quite specific. So pause the video here to have a go. How did we get on with those? So question one, what fraction of the bar is shaded blue? So we need to work out what our numerator is and what our denominator is. So if we remember, the denominator is the number of parts that something's been divided up into. So we've got five parts here. There are three parts that are shaded blue. That will be our numerator. So three fifths is our answer. Number two, what fraction of the bar is shaded green? We need to be careful here. This is one of the questions where I said read the question carefully. The fraction of the bar that's shaded green is eight eighths. The bar has been divided into eight and it's asking us for a fraction. So if you've written one, I'm very sorry that you're incorrect, but it's about reading the question carefully. Question three, how many parts are yellow? The answer is five parts. Again, it's one of those questions where you have to really read the question carefully in order that you don't trip yourself up. So a little bit of a reminder there that even though these questions look really simple, it's really important to read them carefully. So looking at our fractions today, I've got a number line here. So I've got zero at the left-hand side where we would normally find our zero. I've got a big thick line in the middle and I've got a smaller line to the left and the right of it. So we're going to be working in halves for this. So we need to think about how many halves I have on my number line. So if we go through, I've got one half, two halves, three halves and four halves. So I've got my worked out how many halves I've got using my number line and I've got four of them. Now we can simplify this down a little bit. So if we draw out our number blocks and we divide it into two pieces, I can count my halves. So I've got one half and two halves. So my two halves, they are going to make one whole. So two halves is the same as, it's equivalent to one. But I've still got two halves to work with. So I need to do the same again. So I've drawn my bar out, I've divided it into two, and I've got one half there, and I've got, so I've got one and one half now. I've now got one and two halves. But I can also write that as do holes. So you can see from the bars, I've used all four of my halves. I've colored all of my bar in to show the halves that I've got. So four halves is the same as two. So here, how many halves have we got here? I've got two at the top. So we're working in halves. So I'm gonna need my denominator as two. I've got two halves at the top. I've got three halves because I've got one more underneath. So I've got three halves in total. So I could leave my fraction like this. It's a, it's a correct answer but it's not the correct answer. It's one way of writing it. Now, sometimes in our questions we'll get as we go through our maths, we'll get two marks. One mark will be for correctly identifying the numerator and the denominator. And there'll be another mark for converting it into something. And we'll come to that in a second. So this is an improper fraction. So an improper fraction is where the numerator is greater than the denominator. And as mathematicians, we really don't like these. They look untidy, they don't look right. So what we do is we convert them. So I've got one hole at the top. I've got one half underneath. So one and one half. Now this is called a mixed number. So it's a whole number with a fraction. So it looks right. So we've got our fractions in the right order and we've got the whole numbers to tell us how many full lots we have of the fractions. So if you look at our bar, I've got two whole 
sorry, one hole, thinking of the previous one, I've got one whole bar filled in with halves. So I can have that as one. Now we could do this with the bars divided into eights and tens and twenties, hundreds, thousands, depending on what our fraction we're working with is. The problem with it is it becomes really untidy and a lot of hard work to work with. So as we go through our lesson, we're going to look at how to do this in a more simplistic way. What I want you to do next, I've got some questions for you to have a look at. Have a look at these. Look at them carefully. And how do the representations show mixed numbers and how do they show improper fractions? Pause the video here and have a good look and see if you can work out what it is. How did you get on? So if we look at our number line, we're working in thirds. So we've actually got on there one third, two thirds, one, and then one and one third. So that would be our proper, sorry, our mixed number um, version of how to write it. An improper fraction, we've got three thirds, that's the same as that's the equivalent as to one. I need to add one more third onto that. So it's actually four thirds. So that's how I could write it as an improper fraction. So I can take the number of holes, so I know that three thirds makes one hole, and I can work it that way. And then I can add my extra third onto my three thirds to give me my four thirds. Looking over at our bar model, I can just move one across there and then it gives me a nice, neat full bar. So I've got 10 sixths. Now I can write this as 10 sixths, that's my improper fraction. To write it as a proper fraction or a mixed number fraction, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six there. So I've got a hole there and I've got four sixths underneath. So I've got one and four sixths. Moving on to our barrels, two and a half. That's my mixed number fraction. So that's how I'm going to write it as a mixed number. To write it as an improper fraction, I need to work out how many halves I've got in total. So I've got two on the first barrel and then another two on the second barrel to give me four halves plus the one that's on the half full barrel is five halves. So that would be written five over two. So you can see how we can convert from an improper fraction to a mixed number and from a mixed number to an improper fraction. So we know the skill both ways round. So how can we convert the improper fraction to a mixed number? We need to think of how many parts we've got. So we've got seven thirds here shown in the pizzas above. So I've got two full lots of three. So I've got two full pizzas worth and I've got one third left over. So there's my two, those are the two holes. So I can write that as a, an ordinary number as two. And then I've got my fraction left, which is here, which we've got three parts. So that's my denominator three. And I've got one piece, so that's one third. So as a converting the improper fraction to a mixed number, that gives me two and one third. Have a go at this one. Convert the improper fraction to a mixed number. So what I want you to do, write down the improper fraction and then using the bars, work it out as to what it should be for a proper, sorry, for a mixed number. OK, how did we get on with this? So the first thing we need to look at is what have I divided my bar by? And that's six. So we're working in sixths for this one. What I need to do next, I need to count up all the sixths that I've got. I've got three full rows. I know three sixes are 18. And then I've got five in the bottom. So 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. I've got 23 sixths. So there's my improper fraction. Now I can use my bars to work out what the mixed number should be. I've got three full bars and I've got one bar that's got five out of six. So I've got three 
holes. So I've got three. And then in my bottom bar, I've got my five sixths. So as a mixed number, it's three and five sixths. Have a go at these. Pause the video here and work your way through them. And when you're ready, press play for the answers. How did we get on? Hopefully you've found this nice and easy. If you haven't, if you think, oh, I'm not really sure, go back and watch the last couple of minutes of the video. And maybe take some of the examples, draw them out and take them back with you and work them through as you come, as, you, as I'm talking through the worked examples on the screen. If you feel like you've done well with these, let's move on and share the answers. So eight fifths is the same as one and three fifths. 12 fifths is the same as two and two fifths. Nine quarters is the same as two and two quarters. Five thirds is one and two thirds. So using the bar models. So this is one way of working it out. So seven thirds, we're gonna draw our bars in threes. So we should have two bars fully colored in and one bar of three with only one colored in. So that gives us two and a third. And then we just repeat the process as we go through for each one, watching the denominator, because that will tell you how many pieces that bar needs to be divided into. If you're using a maths book, you've got the squares in your book. They're really useful. You can just do it in squares. You can have three squares for your thirds, four squares for your quarters, and so on and so forth. So moving forward, we can do it by drawing it out. So converting the improper fractions to mixed numbers. We can use our division skills that we were practicing last week. I can divide 32 by seven. And I get the answer of four with a remainder of four. But how can I use that to tell me what I've got left as a mixed number? So what I've done, I've divided my numerator by my denominator. Because my, de my numerator is bigger than my denominator, I can do this. It will tell me how many whole parts there are and it will tell me what the remainder is. So 32 divided by seven, four sevens are 28, add four more gives me 32. So that's where we've got the answer from. So four with a remainder of four. So it's our remainder here that we're gonna, gonna tell us how many parts we've got left. So the remainder, it becomes the number O, so it becomes our numerator, our denominator is not going to change. We've still got sevenths in this instance. So our numerator will change. So it will become whatever the remainder is. So this one here, 32 sevenths. We can convert that one quarter. Well, that's a proper fraction, isn't it? So we don't need to do anything with that. So we've got one quarter means one divided by four. So it tells us that one split into four parts. So 32 over seven means 32 divided by seven. So I've got 32 here. And I've got my sevens there and my four remaining at the bottom row. So I've got one, two, three, four rows complete and one row partly complete. So that gives me my one, two, three, four with a remainder of four. So one, two, three, four holes there. And then I've got my four sevenths. So a remainder of four. So it, we're really going to be using those dividing skills that we learned when we worked through last week. So a remainder of four becomes four sevenths. So it's just another way of we can draw it out if it helps while we get our heads around this. So 32 sevenths is the same as or the equivalent to four and four sevenths. Okay, have a go at these. Let's see how well you can get on. Just to remind you, you're dividing the numerator by the denominator. And whatever your remainder is will be the number that goes above the denominator for your mixed numbers. Have a go at these now. 
Okay, how did we get on with those? I'm guessing some of you found this really easy. Some of you struggled a little bit and then remembered, hang on, it's just division. I know how to divide 107 by 10 because we did it last week. That's fine. And I'm fairly certain that we've all got the reasonably the same answer. Let's have a look through. So 10 and 7 tenths. So to work this through, we have to divide 107 by 10. I know 10 tens are 100, so I've got a seven remaining. So 10 and seven tenths. 22 divided by three. Well, I know seven threes is 21. Add one more gets me to 22. So we're starting to move away from drawing these out and because the numbers are going to get bigger, having to draw out 107 squares in rows of 10 is going to take a lot of time, a lot of paper, and a lot of patience. So by doing it with this, by just using our division skills that we learned last week, we can get these a lot quicker and a lot more simply. So how can we find the value of our star? So we're trying to work out what our denominator is. We've got some information on here. We've got 25 at the top of our fraction and it equals eight something. So we need to work out what we're dividing by that will give us eight. Have a workout through here. See if you can work it through. Pause the video now. Right, how did we find that? It's a bit tricky. There's a little bit of maths to do with this. So let's talk through it. Let's work it through together. So I know 25 divided by something equals eight and something. So I need to work this through. So 25 divided by eight. So I can switch this round. I can use the numbers that I've got. So if we're missing numbers, it's just what this is. It's a missing number question. We're just using what we've got. So 25 divided by eight equals what our star is. So that will give us our denominator. So we know 12 divided by three is four. And I know 12 divided by four is three. So we're looking at 25. So we're doubling that. So 25 divided by eight is three. So I know we're doing 12 divided by four is the near half gives me um, 12 divided by three gives me the near half of this. So I know 12 doubled is 24. So if half of eight is four and that gives me three, all I've done is I've doubled both numbers so I can use this method. So 25 divided by 8 is 3, which is 24. And then I've got a remainder of 1. So I am dealing with thirds here. So 25 thirds. So our star was thirds. And our remainder was one third. I'm going to go back over this because it's one of those that we I feel like we need to go back over again and just talk our way through it. So looking at the bottom here, the near doubles. So 12 divided by three is four. We know that four doubled makes eight. So we can use that knowledge because 24 is a near double of, sorry, of, no, 12 doubled is nearly 25, it's 24. We have a remainder in there and we're looking for a remainder in this as well. So using that information, using that knowledge, we can use near doubles to help us. So going back to what we've got, it might be simpler for some of you to think, actually, I'm just going to do 25 divided by eight. I'm going to use the skills we practiced last week. So 25 divided by eight is three with a remainder of one. So what we're looking for is, so three is our star number. So that's the unit, the division we're using. So if we were drawing this out in bars, 
this is what I'd be dividing my bars into. So 25 thirds, which is our improper fraction. So we now need to convert this back to a mixed number. 25 divided by three is eight. We know that. So three eighths is 24. We've got one more to get to 25. That's our remainder. And our remainder goes over our denominator. So this is how it would be drawn out in bars. And you can see now with the numbers are getting bigger, the bars are getting more complicated to keep on top of. So this is where being able to use our dividing skills really comes in handy. So our star is worth three and our yellow block was worth one. So have a go with these. See if you can convert these through. So just remember, use your division skills for this. So you divide the numerator by the denominator for question three. Work your way through question four, question five, question six, and question seven. Pause the video now. Okay, how did we get on with these? Let's go through the answers. Question three, we've got the answers there. You can pause the video and check through those. Question four, seven bottles of juice. So each contains half a litre. We've got seven halves. So if we were going to write it as a fraction, it would be seven over two. So we can have that as an improper fraction of seven over two. But we're asked, being asked to work out how many litres. So we need, we've got seven half litres. So we need to work out how many full litres we've got. So seven divided by two is three remainder one. So we've got three full litres and we've got a half a litre, which is our remainder. Question five, how is Dexter incorrect? He's incorrect because all he's done is taken the three from 32 thirds and put it as a big number, as our whole number, and then left the two thirds as his improper, as his um, fraction. So he's not done it correctly. He's not divided the denominator into the numerator. If he'd done that, he'd know the answer is 10 and two thirds. So finding the value of our yellow circle. The only pieces of information we've got is 27 and two. So we can use that information. So we can do, we've got these in our denominators, sorry, our numerators. So I've got 27 and I've got two. And I can do something with those. I can subtract them. Now, by doing that, I'm left with 25 and I can use my times table knowledge. I know that 25 divided by five will give me five equal whole numbers and will give me the remainder. So if we take the remainder off, so we take our two fifths off and we can divide 25 by five, that will give us 27 over five, which is five and two fifths. Question seven is using exactly the same technique. So we've got 30 and two. So I'm gonna do 30, take away two, which will give me 28. And then it's just working out what two numbers multiplied together will make 28. So we're looking at factors and we've practiced this before as well. So we're just using all the things we know. Well done today hoping we've got through this if you've got questions please as always send me a message in teams i'm more than happy to go through it i will go through it in your live sessions as well to help you through if you've got a bit stuck question six question seven needs a bit more thinking it's working out and using number knowledge as well as just being able to do fractions so don't worry if you struggle with those two as i said i'm more than happy to sit down with you guys and go through the techniques that we need to use to get the answers out of these. As always, stay safe and I'll see you again soon.